Today we're going to talk about multi-step equations with special cases. Now, what's a special case? When we deal with equations, we're saying two expressions are even. Um, maybe we say 3x equals 15, something like that. And there is a value of x that makes that statement true because the equation means the two sides are equal in value. Um, but it doesn't always work like that, unfortunately. In some cases, you get one solution. So one solution, I'm going to scroll up just a little bit here. Uh, one solution was like the one that I just said, 3x is equal to 15. So if I want to solve using a, the solution procedure, I'll divide by 3 because it's 3 times x and get x is equal to 5. And you can test that that's true by saying 3 times 5 is equal to 15. And that's what 3x was, it's 3 times 5. So that's true. We can say, yeah, that's right. Um, but the reality is sometimes it doesn't work like that. Sometimes you end up with situations where no matter what you substitute in for the, va for the variable, the solution is still impossible to get. It's not going to work. Similarly, um, you'll end up with situations where no matter what you put in, they will work. So let's take a look at a couple examples and then we'll get some structure about how to come up with what exists and what doesn't. So if I do 1 plus 6x is equal to negative 2 times negative 3x plus 1, for instance. Draw my line. I'll do my distributive property first. Negative 2 times negative 3 is negative 6x. Negative, or positive 6x, I'm sorry, because a negative times a negative is positive. It's even I do it. I have to say it in my head, otherwise I won't do it at all. Negative 2 times positive 1 is negative 2. And then I'm going to bring down 1 plus 6x over here. Well, as you know, we have to eliminate our... Uh, try to get all our variables on one side. So this is plus 6x. So I'm going to subtract 6x from here and from here. This becomes 0, so they cancel. Bring down this negative 2. But this also cancels. 6x minus 6x is 0. So this you just bring down your 1. Now the problem here is that that's not true. 1 is not equal to negative 2. So it's not true when I eliminate my variable term. And so this is no solution. It means essentially the variables will cancel each other out and the values you're left over with don't make an actual equation. It's just an, in, an inequality instead. One is greater than negative two. So they're not equal. So there's no solution. No matter what you substitute in for x in this situation, you're still not going to get one that works. So let's take a look at um, one where maybe everything works. 8 plus 2x is equal to 2 times the quantity x plus 4. Distribute first, 2 times x, 2 times 4. Just to make this easier to see, I'm going to change the order of the terms on this side and put the variable term in front. Positive 2x just goes up here, plus 8 goes here. Now you may notice that this side is exactly the same as this side. So when I cancel out, or when I eliminate my variable term on the right by subtracting, it gives me nothing, so 8 comes down. Same here, 8 comes down. But this is true. So if it's true statement, once you eliminate that variable term, it's infinitely many solutions, which means basically any real number that I substitute in for the value of x makes a statement true. So I have infinite possibilities of what number I could substitute in to make that work. So let's look at a little bit of structure around what do we need to see in order to determine whether we're dealing with a special case or not. So I'm going to uh, delete all this stuff. So if you need to pause to get it on your paper, do so. All right. So what are we really looking for? First thing we're looking for is elimination of all variable terms on both sides of the equation. So that's the first thing we're looking for. If I have 3x and this is equal to 3x, when I eliminate them by subtraction, 
they go away. So I've eliminated those terms. If you have a variable term left over after you do your combining variable terms together on one side, it's not going to be a special case. It's going to be one solution. But if you eliminate all the variable terms, then you're looking at a situation where um, you're dealing with a special case. The second thing that you need to look for is, is the final statement. true or not true. If I eliminate the variable terms and it says 4 equals 4, that's true. So that would be infinitely many solutions. Occasionally this is also called identity, just FYI or all solutions is another thing that it's called. Now if it's not true, then you're dealing with no solution. If I eliminate those variable terms and it says 3 equals 4, well 3 does not equal 4, so once my constant terms are left, if the statement that the constant terms make is true, then it's uh, infinitely many solutions, and if it's not true, it's no solution. Alright, let's look at some sample problems since hopefully we can get to where we're trying to get to. I'm going to scroll down here. Leave myself a little space. All right, so for my first one, I'm going to start by distributing, of course. So 12x and 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Starting to see anything? When I eliminate my variable term, I need to get rid of plus 12x on this side, so I subtract 12x. The reason that I'll subtract here instead of like divide or whatever is because I need to figure out well, what's the relationship with the other term. Well, this is minus 4, so it has to be an add-subtract relationship. And since this is plus 12, I subtract. Anyway, these cancel, as you noticed. These also cancel. Not negative 4 is, comes down here, and negative 4 comes down here. That's true. Negative 4 is equal to negative 4. So this is a situation where you have infinitely many solutions. This pen likes to glide, so a lot of times I'll get that LY together. Infinitely many solutions. All right, if you want to pause, I'm going to scroll down here to the next one. Now for this one, it's a little bit more complex, not super complex. It's not going to be that difficult to do. I've got like terms, so I need to combine these two. If they're on the same side, I need to do negative 4 plus 13. I just use the terms in front of them. Um, because the relationship between these numbers is uh, add subtract, because this is minus 3 here, I don't treat this thing in front. I can treat it like a negative. So negative 4 plus 13 is 9x, positive 9, minus 3. That looks really weird there, so I'm going to try to fix that and make it look like an even worse subtraction sign, whatever. And then on this side, I get 9x plus 6. I'm going to eliminate my variable term, minus 9x. The reason it's minus 9, even though this says minus, this just tells me like what the relationship is. It's plus 9. So minus 9x. That cancels. The problem is 9 minus 9 cancels here as well, and it says 6 is equal to negative 3. That is not true. So when you have a not true, this is a no solution. When you first start doing these, it's really um, easy to write down not true, and that's not a thing they're asking you. They want to know what variable can you substitute in to make it work, and the answer in this case is nothing, nothing you can do. All right, I'm going to scroll down. This last one is slightly tricky, not only because it's just a lot, there's just a lot of pieces, but for another reason you'll see in a second. I'm going to try to unhighlight that. That's annoying. Okay. So I need to do all my distributive properties first. So 7k minus negative 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 times plus 6 or positive 6 is negative 12k. And then bring this down. Distribute the whole thing. Negative 2 times 8 is minus 16k negative 2 times positive 1 is minus 2. So I'm going to combine like terms now. Here's some like terms. 7 minus 12 is negative 5. And I'll bring down my minus 2. 
negative 1 minus 16 is negative 17k. Minus 2. So now I want to eliminate minus 17, so I'm going to add 17 to both sides. And end up with 12k minus 2, and I'm going to bring down minus 2 here. Here's the thing. In order to eliminate minus 2, I have to add 2. But in your brain, once you start thinking about, oh, could it be no solution, is you're going to see minus 2 here and minus 2 here and go, oh, it's uh, all infinitely many solutions, or all real numbers is the same thing. Um, but it's not. Add 2 here, add 2 here. Negative 2 plus 2 is equal to 0. We make an, we cancel this out so we don't have to write 0k minus 2, but with constant terms, that'd be just the numbers. You don't do that. So bring down the actual 0, and then you end up with 12k. Divide by 12 on both sides to get k by itself, because the relationship here is 12 times k. So the opposite of multiplication is division. End up with k is equal to 0. So this would be a one solution question, but the number just happens to be zero, or the solution just happens to be zero. So you can have zero as an answer. When you start working with these, it's really easy to say, well, I saw a zero, so that means those terms cancel. It's infinitely many solutions, or no solution, or whatever in your head. But if you end up with a variable term somehow by itself, and it's not equal to anything, so say I'd gotten to here, and I canceled these, and ended up with something like 12k is equal to, and there's nothing there, there has to be something there. You can't have nothing. If you do have nothing, um, you have to put a zero there. So then you'd still solve it. So just don't fall into that trap. Otherwise, if you eliminate those variable terms and you end up with a true statement, that would be infinitely many solutions. Because no matter what you substitute in for that variable, it's still going to give you a true statement. If you eliminate the variable term and it's not true, 3 is equal to 5, for instance, um, no matter what you put in, it's still not going to work, so it's no solution. Because the question they're really asking you is, what is the value of the variable that allows the statement to be true? So make sure that you handle these appropriately and answer based on what you see.